Let's move Thank on you. to the next talk on directed deceased organ donation, pros, cons and the way forward in India. May I invite the chairpersons for this talk, Dr. Kalpana Mehta, Dr. Divyesh Engineer, Dr. Satish Balan. Please note, this session is recorded and the speaker would be Dr. Urmila Anand. So, good morning everyone. I am Satish Balan. So, welcome you to this talk and the talk is going to be given by none other than Urmila. Urmila has been a good friend of mine and uh, just uh, we studied in the same institute and we had a association lasting for more than 30 years and you know her uh, achievements now that the topic of today is also an extremely interesting topic a directed disease organ donation now the problem you know that this directed is a potential bullet in your brain because it can happen have a lot of unintended consequences when you're talking about that so i would uh, first of all thank the organizers for allowing us to be the chairpersons do my co chairpersons have anything to say before i hand over the mic to dr Urbila? Good Dr. morning. Kalpana. At the very onset, I would like to thank Professor Vivek Bute, Dr. A.B. Organ Abraham, and members of the organizing committee, ISOT 2021, for giving me this opportunity to talk about directed disease organ donation, pros and cons, and the way forward. In the next 15 minutes, I'll discuss about ethics of transplantation, difference between life and disease transplant, who owns the organ, the individual or the state, some words about advanced donation practices, Directed disease donation worldwide, directed disease donor transplant program in the Indian context, and summarize the whole talk and leave the forum for discussion. Directed disease donation is a request made by the donor family for the allotment of an organ to a specific recipient for transplantation. Whereas conditional donation is a situation where family will only donate if the organs are given to the recipient of choice, family member, but it particular gender, race, or ethnicity. Conditional donation is not practiced anywhere worldwide. The principles governing ethics of transplantation include the principle of justice, where the organ should be allocated to the person who is sickest and who has the high risk of dying. Also, it should be matched to a person who has the best survival outcome. Priority is also given to a person with the longest waiting time. In some programs, Organs are given to people who have been previous living donors. Now, if you look into this principle, directed donation actually negates the principle of justice, except in a situation where there is a directed donation to a previous living donor, where you actually you are awarding past altruism. The principle of utility mentions that the procedure should have the greatest societal good and have a better outcome aggregate outcome. To achieve that, measures to increase transplant rates, which will result in better survival, should be adopted. Directed disease donor transplant programs may achieve this because they will improve consent and improve transplant rate. The process should only be directed for a specific wide recipient and only for a single organ. And hence, the program benefits by the rest of the organs, which will be given to recipients in the wait list. The principle of respect for person in, suggests that the donor and the immediate family should be aware of the treatment decisions, should have the autonomy to decide regarding consent for donation. Autonomy about what to do with the donor's organs, but it doesn't allow the family to decide on directed donation. Now, is there a difference between live and deceased donation? The American Society of Transplantation says that a directed donation occurs when a donor family or a live donor directs the organ to a specified re recipient. So that's directed donation is actually a rule rather than an exception for a live organ donation. In contrast, non-directed donation may happen with live donors, but actually, as you see, even in our program, non-directed donation is a rule in disease donor programs. And this is because of the concept of autonomy. Live donation emphasizes donor's decision to decide whom to give his or organ. The rationale underpinning this is a donor autonomy and respect for the individual's wishes. 
live donation has always been a directed donation. In disease donor transplant programs, organs of the deceased is considered to be public goods and is automatically available for an impartial, equitable system of organ allocation. So, live donation is directed, whereas the disease donation is non-directed. And this is because of the ethical ambiguity as to whose organ is it anyway. These issues of equitable access and equitable allocation are actually debates of who owns the organs after death. Direct living donation, it is believed, builds intimate relationship. So hence, this is not possible after death. Upon death, the person can decide to gift his organs in a just and equitable manner, but cannot decide to give to a directed recipient. This is because of an ethical construct that one cannot give, one does not have. So in your death, the organs actually doesn't belong to you. And this has been very nicely summarized in an article where the authors conclude that the burden of proof appears to rest with the state to justify whether you can direct your organs when it's a live donation, but not so when you are dying. It is un unclear why one should prefer, not prefer one's close friends or relatives after death. And also the authors believe that directing your organs after your death to a relative actually does not tarnish the image of transplantation as a transparently fair system. It's important to know that all organs are actually conditional gifts, whether when you're living or after your death. And there have been various situations where actually we have departed from this ethical construct. There are many non-directed living donation programs like the anonymous altruistic donations practiced in US and UK. And then, then there is non-directed altruistic donor in paired kidney exchanges. There are also directed disease donations where paired kidney exchange programs are linked to a directed disease donation. And the OPTN and UNOS has been talking about this concept of allowing disease donor initiated kidney pair chains. In a correspondence in Lancet in 2018, the authors actually believe that we can actually develop a paired kidney exchange by a directed donation. One organ goes through the routine non-directed allocation. One can be directed donated. And if there is an issue of incompatibility, this organ can be channelized to a paired kidney exchange and a domino chain can be constructed from this first initial organ from the disease donor program. And the last could be given to the person in the wait list. So this improves not only the incompatible recipient gets an organ, but also it improves the number of transplantation. Now, what is the situation of directive disease donor transplantation worldwide? USA has legalized it in 2009 when they had a donation rate of 30 per million. UK in 2010 when their donation rate was 24 million. UK is a little circumspect about directed disease donation. They have to approve all their transplants, directed donations by authorization committee. The recipient to whom the organ is directed should be waitlisted and should be a close family member. And recipient should be named in it before at the time of pledging organs. Now, UNOS and OPTN actually has legally authorized directed disease donation. And they believe directed donation can be done as long as agencies involved take steps to verify the medical suitability of the organ offered to the specified recipient. And the final act actually expressly allows direct donation. And there have been at least 100 disease donor di directed transplants each year. And they have been either related to a directed recipient or known to the recipient personally. There have been a lot of media coverage about daughter to father heart transplant and a heart transplant from a church member to a church pastor. The American Society of Transplantation position statement says that it supports efforts to increase organ donation, included directed donations. If it is based on ethics of equality, fairness and sound medical judgment. In a situation where there is no directed donation, the organ should be channelized into the waitlisted program. Australia also has guidelines for its directed disease transplant programs. 
there should be evidence that the do donor was prepared to be an organ donor and there should be some kind of direction either through a living will or an advanced care directive or a prior planning with the transplant team that upon the person's death the organ should be given to a close relative and the potential recipient should be eligible for transplantation in the indian context directed disease donation finds no mention in the 1994 act or also in the 2014 codification there of course there are no mentions about the advanced donation practices i discussed earlier why are we talking about this because there has been a paper published in indian journal of organ transplantation where a directed disease donation was considered but fell through because of medical unsuitability there have been newspaper articles this is a debate which came out in times news network where dr arvind um, arvind soyan and dr subhash gupta actually had a debate where should india allow families of deceased to decide who gets the donated organ we also need to look whereas deceased donor transplantation in india is actually non non directed we know we are all in our clinical practice or organs are often allocated who is closer to the hospital or has money available there are situations where there have been subjects to coercion because when the organs have been allotted out of turn to political persons vips as we call them and people with celebrity status we all agree that the disease donor transplant program in india does not operate detached from the reality that is india we don't live in an ideal altruistic world a question i always ask myself being part of a large disease donor program does our hospital allocate without bias does our authorization committee oversee the allocation rigorously i think to the, to be frank the answer is often no so what are the pros and cons about directed disease donor transplant program in india the pros is it will improve consent and improve the disease donor transplant program in india donor family will have a compulsive reason to consent to give the organs and to disregard this concept completely as dr subhash gupta says is actually throwing the baby with the bath water now organ donation of brains death is actually an act of altruism allows the family to overcome grief during this situation in india we believe the organ is a property of the state and should be distributed based on ethical principles whereas directed disease donor transplant program holds the state to the ransom when the donor family agrees to consent only when the organs are given to a specified recipient and directed disease donor transplant program like anything else in india is subject to financial coercion Dr. Manisha Saha and myself had a editorial in the same issue of Indian Journal of Organ Transplantation, where I had personally talked to Dr. Sanjay Agarwal, who is the advisor to NOTO, and he feels that deceased directed deceased donation should be accepted on a case-to-case -case basis, but only after certain guidelines are framed by the public policymakers. The concept is almost similar to that what is published by the Australian government. and the recipient should be listed be beforehand and only one organ should be considered for a directed disease donation so we propose a directed disease donor transplantation checklist where the donation should happen to only a close relative only only one organ should be used for directed donation the reci recipient should be wait listed in the program all the other organs should be harvested and utilized in the program there should be no financial coercion and there should be of course no situation of conditional donation whatever it is the authorization committee should meet even if it is in the midnight and should approve the directed disease organ donation so ladies and gentlemen two contradictory principles underpin the rationale of organ transplantation a directed living donation and a non directed disease donation advanced donation programs worldwide actually blur this distinction and this is because we still have an ethical ambiguity of who owns one's organ especially after death directed disease donor transplant program is developing worldwide in india we should actually 
need to start this conversation. The mere fact that there are obstacles does not mean we should not soldier on. And we should, like many things in India, should always take a leap of faith and consider directed disease donor transplant program in India. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Hello, thank you, Dr. Urmila, for that uh, no, uh, novel or new concept for India. But we still need to, uh, isn't it, we need to still legalize that and look also into various ethical aspects of it. My contention is that, is it our impartial uh, donation which is happening today, can it be more directed than calling it non-directed? Because today, not everywhere we are looking at the HLA typing of the patient and looking at the virtual uh, the, uh, matching which can be done and organ can be donation. So with this comment, I give it to my other colleague and open for the discussion. If there are any questions. Yeah, I think uh, we are out of time. So Urmila, can you take that question? Is there a question? Yeah. Sadish, no, just a uh, comment. You can respond. Uh, <laughs> Madam, yeah. No, uh, whatever it is, anything that we need to do as far as something as uh, contentious as directed disease donation, it has to be legalized. It has to be discussed threadbare by NOTO and also okay. states have to... In fact, we still have no ratification of paired kidney exchange, which is also actually a form of non-directed living donation. There are also a lot of ethical uh, concern issues with uh, paired kidney exchange. We have not been able to ratify that in many states in India. So to think of a directed disease donation, which is far away from basic ethics of transplant, will take time. But there is always a situation, we have done this, we have done many things in India, despite having all our problems about commercialization of transplants, which is still going on. We have moved to a successful disease donor program. We can move to, and I believe the disease donor program in India is much, much more ethical than the living donor program. So, because it has a lot of rigorous state oversight. Similarly, if you do a disease donor uh, directed disease donor with a state oversight, I feel that will be ethically much better. What have we done with our living donor transplants? The hospital authorizes it. There is hardly any oversight from anybody. If you do more than 25 transplants, it is your hospital which decides. I think your point is taken, Urla. We are completely out of time. So we'll stop here and then we'll move on. And thank you for a very, very well uh, expressed ideas on the disease donor transplant program and we have to be really careful about thank this you. if you, it is prompt. Thank you very much and thank the organizers and we'll hand over to the next session. Thank you Dr. Urmila. I also thank the chairpersons for chairing the session.